Hey guys, welcome to Cooper TV. We are going to go through our Oromancer deck guide playlist thing. So I've eventually unlocked all the cards for this despicable deck. It's, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's funky. I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm just not running it perfectly, but I find, find it funky. I mean, it's the curve. Look at these five cost cards. They're just so expensive. There's no mana ramp as such in this deck. There's weird drawn cards, but no mana ramp as such. So without further ado, I run all the four Evolving Wilds, just because of the mana is a bit funky with this deck, especially with such high costs. Straight in, we'll have to run this, not really because it's particularly great, but it's because it's a one cost enhancement, you know, or aura. There's not many cheap and auras in this deck, so you have to run this one, and you can be a bit tricksy with it because of the flash. Same with the lifelink, one cost, creature gets lifelink. Probably the best card in the game, uh, the game, the deck, Daybreak, Coronet, Coronet. Plus three, plus three, has first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. Stick this on an invisible stalker with another enhancement on it, and it's pretty much GG. Depending on what deck you're playing against, great card. Obviously, you have to have added, it has to be an enhanced creature, but that combination, three cards, bang. That's the thing about this deck. Though you win with the same combination over and over again. Anyway, moving on. Elumbra, another cheap enhancement. It's a one-one. Plus, you've got Totem Hammer, so it's a kind of cool card earlier on. I run three invisible stalkers currently, I'm not sure if I should be running four, but you want creatures in this deck and well basically it's a two cost hexproof invisible unblockable dude, so it's pretty cool. I run three of the core spirit dancers, this is obviously your way of getting drawn cards, casting on um, auras on her or other creatures that lets you draw a card, plus if you put one on her she gets plus two plus two, so she can come quite big later on. So I run three of them. And um, that could be a little bit excessive. I could maybe drop one and only need to run two because you don't really want three of them on the battlefield at once. Uh, Triclopine Sight. Um, yeah, again, it's just because it's a two cost aura. You know, it's got flash as well. Plus, you get plus one, plus one in vigilance, and you untap as well. So, it's, I mean, untap's interesting because you can swing in. They might block with equal strength. You cast this, you then kill the creature. Plus, you've got untap, so the vigilance kicks in for the following turn. I currently one run one of the Imperial Armor. You get plus one plus one for each card in your hand. Early on, really good. You can win the game by dropping this on top of the Spirit Dancer and being like, what is it? If you've got seven cards in hand, you're gonna be like, she's gonna be like an eleven eleven, I think. I don't know. Not eleven eleven. Uh, nine eleven possibly. She just becomes ridiculously massive. And if you're playing against decks that have very little removal then that is a brilliant combination. So I'm only running one of them, there is two in the deck. This is a great card, the Geist of St. Traft. Um, Hexproof again, three cost, and when he attacks you put a 4-4-1 Angel that basically attacks and then excels. A couple of enhancements on him, Indestructibility is pretty cool because then they can't kill him and he can just swing in for with the Angel every turn. Another cheap cost, the Griffin Guide, I run both of these because it's three and you get plus two, plus two, and you have flying, and when the creature dies you also get a 2-2 Griffin out on the battlefield as well. Pretty nifty. Um, Opedia Eye, yeah, again, just because it's a 3 cost flash, but then this one's quite handy because you can drop it down, they don't block, you flash this onto something and then you get to draw a card. And if you put on a flyer, if they've got nothing that deals with flyers, you're drawing a card every time you're attacking. So it's not the worst card, and it's only a 3 cost. Pare, I think that's how you say it. Um, enhanced creature, all damage will be dealt to you is dealt to enhanced creature instead. So if you've got indestructibility in this on the creature, then you're never going to die unless they get rid of the creature. And if it's an invisible dude with... Um, he's hex proof and you've got other dudes out, there's no chance, they're never going to win, you can just sit there with that dude, never attacking and just leaving them. So that's the other combination. You can also, if you need to, stick it on an enemy creature, so then when they attack, you know, they're actually doing damage to their big creature. I'm not sure how it'd be work if you cast this onto the Obliterate Titan and then they attacked, if it would be them that'd have to sacrifice cards because it's them that are doing the damage. I don't know how that combo would work, but it's an interesting thing to think about. The Even Fleetwing, I run two of these. It's quite expensive, it's a 4 cost which annoys me, it does have flying, it does have hexproof but it's only a 2-2 two, two. so I mean you can boost up enhancements but it's annoying it being a 4 cost to be honest with you, especially the creatures in this, there's not much that you know you can talk about. This guy's pretty cool, the Grand Arbiter August the 4th, white spells cost 1 less, blue spells cost 1 less but my opponent's spells cost 1 more, turn 4 you can slow them down, though he can just get pinged straight away from a terminate or something so you might, you've got to be kind of careful with when you're dropping him. I currently own only two of the four indestructibilities. Four cost, your creature can't be destroyed. And they're quite immense. Wall of Reverence, I'm currently running this. Not because it's a great card, but it does kind of come in handy. You can get it down turn four and start to slow them down just because you get the life back. It's kind of cool. You can be quite close to death with one creature, making it quite strong, and then using this guy just to keep you in the game. 
I run one of the Drake Umbras, obviously plus three flying, and you get Totem for five. This is where it gets insane. This is just the, the, this deck. Everything's so expensive. So follow in footsteps, put it on a creature, and then you get a copy of that creature. You can use it to kill legendary creatures if you want, or just beef up your side. This card I haven't run, I've just chucked it in the deck to try it out now, so I don't know how it works. And hands creature, when the creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Plus you also put this back in your hand. So I'm not I'm interested to see how it works. It's a 5 cost, so it's pretty chit -ching, so it's probably going to be quite rubbish. Just because there's not, you've not got any kill cards in your deck, so putting on an enemy creature and then killing it doesn't really work. You'd have to do tricks with block and... It's a bit weird, but maybe on my own creatures, I'm not sure. I've, I've chucked it in there for the sake of it, just to try it. Mammoth Umbra does what it says. 3-3, three, three, Vigilance, Totem Armor. Quite cool, run one of them. Obviously run the two mind controls, taking control of your enemy creatures is quite cool. This is quite a cool card, the Signal of Empty Throne. You know, you get this down every time you cast an Aura or an Enhancement, you just basically are owning, you're getting 4-4 four, four Flyers, it's pretty cool. Oh, no, just whenever you cast an Enhancement spell but it's pretty good. You can really beef up your side with this card and it does help. It's a 5 cost though, but it does work. I run one of the 3 dreams, search your library for 3 aura cards with different names and put them in your hand. There is 2, but you're kind of sad if you've got 2 of them in your opening hand because they're so far away. And do you really need to search your hand for 6 auras at any point in the game? I don't think so. I mean, obviously running two, you're going to hit it more often. But the fact I'm running one of these guys, he allows me to search my library and put an aura card in as well. So you can go and get something good. I'm not a particular fan of this guy. He's a 2-5 five for 5. But, you know, it's not an, the aura servant deck, so chucked him in. Okay, our kill cards. This is our one way of dealing with creatures. Destroy all creatures that aren't enhanced. They cannot be regenerated. As I said, they're not enhanced. So they're not anything with... Obviously, this card, the mind, the fool's demise, they'll be enhanced because that'll be on them, so it doesn't kill them. But you know, you got a couple of boys that are enhanced, you can clear a side. Though it's not the greatest way of dealing it, but it's only five costs, so I run one, two of them. And in our final card, our servants of the lost Alroa or Alara. This card's pretty cool. Exalted four five, and whenever your creature attacks on its own, you can put an aura card on it. It just basically you attack, bam, you've got a big dude. And also the Exalted gives them plus one, plus one as well. So I like that. There's two of them in the deck. Right, so that's the current formation of this deck. It's a bit, yeah. It's really dependent on lands. Sometimes you'll draw two lands and that's all you hit. I've gone like seven turns without hitting lands. I had one game where all I had was three Evolving Wilds the entire time. And I think it went to turn eight as well, just because my opponent was also mana screwed something special. But it's kind of awful. So the cards I'm not running... Dropped one Invisible Stalker, dropped one Dancer. This card, Nacro, ne Nacrolipsy, Nacrolipsy, basically puts someone to sleep. So at the beginning of their turn, they, they're tapped. Great if they've got no abilities, you can tap them and prevent them attacking. It is an enhancement, so if you've got your uh, Spirit Dancer down, you do draw a card, but it doesn't kill them. So you might find yourself in a position where you've got this card in your hand, but they've got a creature and ability. So this is pointless put on that. So I don't like it. Same as a pacify, I kind of just thought, why bother with this? It's just slowing my opponent down. You know, eventually, if I, if I hit the cards that I want to hit, my creature's going to be big enough to block anything. It's going to have lifelink as well and vigilance, so I just thought, let them swing in um, currently. Maybe I should put it back in, I'm not sure, I've dropped it. Academy Researchers, the three cost, the two, obviously, blue, and you can put an aura card onto them and enter battlefield from your hand. The Still a bit, eh. Uh, same as Auromancer, it's all dependent on a, you know, it's all, this is all dependent on this card on uh, Aurors being in your graveyard, and if they're not, then it's just, it's just a 2-2, two -two. it's a waste. This guy's a little bit funky, um, I've ran him for a wee bit, I'm not sure, you know, turning their creatures into three ones are kinda cool, cause like, their big boys are like them three ones, and you can just trade off with this guy, I suppose, but he's still a little bit funky for three. As I said, we run one of these dudes. The Flicker Wisps is another card that I've kind of been running, but it just gets killed, and I just don't find it as useful in this deck as it is in the Peacekeeper's deck. I just, especially with the two planes, sometimes you'll have it in your hand, and you'll have three islands somehow, and you're just like, ah, I can't cast it! So I just dropped it. Uh, just uh, if the, the current form, I think you're better with the Invisible Stalkers or anything. I just got rid of it. I might put it back in for something else, but oh, no, no, get out. Currently not running it. Same as Hannah the Ship Navigator, a bit funky ability, 3 cost to return an artifact or enhancement from your grave garden. She's only 1, 2 for 3, so all dependent on her being a card in your graveyard. This card's kind of cool. If you've not got any enhanced creatures, then they all get plus 1, plus 1 and can't be blocked. 
so you can do quite a bit of damage, but it's still a bit iffy. And then what happens if you draw this and you've got three creatures that are enhanced? It's a bit useless. And this deck's all about enhancing your creatures. So I just kind of thought, nah, I don't think I, I want it. I'm not sure. I chucked out. I was watching Bucci talk about it on um, one of his games. In the, or was it Bucci? I can't remember. Someone was definitely talking about it, saying that they had lost to this card. Uh, but I don't run it. Moving on, yet again, another dude that you can tap down and bring a enhancement or something from your graveyard back in a battlefield. Blah, I'd rather be going into my hand and getting enhancements. Why can I not tap it down and go to my hand? So blah. Here's another one, a Talon Trooper. Three cost, two, three flyer. Blah. You know, I mean, you kind of want to run it, but it's not great. So, same as this guy. And then you get up to four cost, this guy, Guardian Serpent. If source would do opponent, you deal one damage, prevent one of that. He's a three, four, but... Yeah. You know, it's just, there's other cards I'd rather run. Indestructibility, as I said, a tough run to the aim. This card's a bit, Ocular Halo's a bit funky as well. You can tap it for a planes and make it Vigilance, or you can draw a card. Four cost. Another, this is a five cost. Another reasonably interesting creature, but the times I ran it, I'd drop it down and it would just get killed. It would never, ever be able to really do anything. I think I've only ever used, was able to ever cast one enhancement and boost my creatures plus one, plus one before this thing was pinged and I still lost the game. Just because it's a five cost, and it's the two planes as well. It's, you know, not a five cost with just one, it's the two planes. As I said, we'll run one of these, even though there's three in the deck. This card's pretty cool, five cost, but it's multiple or gold haven. Ooh. All creatures, other creatures are one ones, but she just gets pinged straight away. So, and run it. Five cost. We run one of the Mammoth Ambrose, we run one of them, we run one of them. Yeah, I'm not sure about the Aura Touched Mage. The problem is, it's a six cost, three, three. Obviously, when she enters a battlefield, you can put, um, um, you can put an, an Aura on her, so she'll technically not be a three, three. But I still think, you know, it's almost a waste because you can drop her turn six, put an Aura on her, and then bang, she's dead if she gets pinged. I mean, obviously you could put indestructibility on her and that would stop it and she would be okay, but then she's only in a 3-3 indestructible. You still have to boost her up. It's still a bit for that cost. Yeah, as I say, we're on one of these. Then we get to the big guys, Sun Titan from the Peacekeepers. We know he's a great card, just it's the 6 cost. And sometimes you'll never get to 6 mana with this deck, so yeah. Obviously, going into your graveyard's cool for 3 costs. It's a really good card and it can work in this deck. So it is possible I might stick it back in. I just don't know what I'd remove. Maybe one of my kill cards. Yeah, actually, I think I'll do that. Or will I put her in? Nah, she's a 7 cost, even though she is pretty beefy. Flying protection from all colours. So she is a beast when she comes in, but 7. I'd rather have Sun Titan, I think, because of the vigilance. Yeah, let's screw it. Let's take put Sun Titan in and just get rid of one of our um, kill cards. We'll run it like that for the time being. So there you go, guys. There's the Aura Mancer. The thing I think about this deck is there's so many mixed color spells, two planes, you know, and everything. I just don't know if it works properly. Um, I'll post up some games of it. I'm not, I don't particularly enjoy using it. You either completely stomp over somebody or you get completely owned. But you sometimes can get interesting games, but they tend to be because you're not hitting anything decent. Both opponents are hitting crap cards, so the game kind of stalls. There you go, guys. Post your comments. As you can see, the curve, I mean, it's just one, one, two costs. Two, one costs. Ten, two costs. But the two costs are, you know, all these low enhancements. I want more of them. Six, three, six, four, five, tens. Ten, five, sorry, and two sixes. And it's only 35% creatures, that's the problem. So I would like me, you know, maybe take out some of the other enhancements and put some other creatures in, but they're all gash. They're all pretty rubbish. I just don't don't see the point. You know, what could we to take out? I'd rather have my boy, so I don't know. I don't know how to run this deck, guys. That's basically what I'm saying. Anyway, Cooper TV, signing out.